Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. I admit it, I got distracted by Shiny again. Somebody pointed out, not just one person, multiple persons pointed out to me in the comments that there is an Italian cruiser, and um, she's apparently very good. So I didn't have any Italian ships, but now I do. <laughs> this is the Duca Digli Abruzzi, I believe. Duca degli Abruzzi means uh, Duke of Abruzzi, who was a who was a, a, an ad, Italian admiral in in the First World War, and this was this was a ship that was quite involved in the Mediterranean campaign, fighting against the British and trying to support uh, Italy's North Africa campaign and all manner of things actually survived the war and ended up serving after the war still. So, a light cruiser at tier 7. It's not that we don't have any light cruisers at tier 7 or tier 8, but uh, let's take a look at what this ship can do and what makes her special. We have 27,000, almost 28,000 hit points. Not a huge amount of health, but then again, we're in a light cruiser. She is certainly very lightly armored. With a 6% damage reduction, you really, really can't afford to get shot at in this thing. Giving broadside is a big no-no. And you basically have no armor whatsoever. So, uh, that, what else is new? Light cruises. Uh, a speed of 35 knots is pretty good. And she has, with some help, a relatively decent acceleration of 14 seconds. I've got the turn time down to 7 seconds. So, that makes her... Okay, in my book, for in, in terms of maneuverability, she's definitely not as sluggish as some of the Soviet ships. And the main thing, or one of the main things, the guns, 152mm guns. She has 10 of them. So if we look at the turret configurations, she actually gets a triple turret and a twin turret, a super-firing twin turret on, on top of that. So we've got five guns forward and five guns aft. For a total of 10 of them. They are very rapid firing, so I've put everything I could into uh, into reload time and I've got them down to just under six and a half seconds reload. They have an excellent range with almost 13 kilometers. The damage, however, is not great. So with 437 HE and 540 AP, she has relatively poor da uh, poor damage done by these 152 millimeter shells. There are tier six cruisers which are made. There are even tier five cr light cruisers which are having better. I think the French tier uh, tier five light cruiser has be has better damage numbers than this. The chance of setting fire is five percent is okay, and the turret traverse speed is pretty miserable with ten degrees. So. The guns are not the greatest on the ship, and I've actually run the DPS numbers against the shores which is the Soviet Tier 7 Tech Tree Cruiser. The Shores, even with a, with a somewhat long, slightly longer reload, definitely has more damage potential on the guns. The Italian ship, though, has something that the Shores doesn't have, which is very, very usable torpedoes. Now, she only gets two triple launches, one on each side, but the layout of the ship seems really modern. So, uh, she has a lot of deck space, and... The torpedoes have extremely good torpedo angles, and they do they do a massive 9.3 kilometer range. So I don't think there's anything, including the Japanese ships at tier seven, that has a range of uh, of much over eight kilometers. This is this is these are extreme range torpedoes, and obviously with together with the very long range guns, gives us kind of again an idea how the ship's intended to play. She's playing very similar to, say, the Mogami, the Kutuzov, the um, the Shores. She's a long-range support slash fire ship with long-range torpedoes. She has an okay anti-aircraft armament and a very very good concealment, in my opinion, with under eight kilometers. She's not like the Soviet ships that get spotted halfway across the map. She can usually actually get the first shot off against uh, against enemy ships. In terms of ship skills, it's an interesting combination. She gets the air defense alert, which helps 
the anti air a little bit, but still not much. I mean, she's she's not going to be capable of supporting herself on her own against uh, against sustained air attacks. And you hit things like the Kaga at these tiers. She also does get the Sonar, which is just the... Uh, you only get two, two charges. It's the level one Sonar, so it doesn't have the greatest of durations or anything. But that makes her a relatively effective Destroyer Hunter. Because, well, first of all, you do have torpedoes which are more than just self-defense. So actually sh enemy ships tend to keep the distance from you, I found. And if destroyers get close and try to smoke up, then you can use your sonar to, to get through them. And you have the very rapid firing 150mm guns with the armor piercing being very effective against destroyers. So even though she doesn't do as much as the Soviet cruiser, she has definitely some advantages of her own. This is a very this is a very multi-role ship. She can she can play a lot of different different roles. And she's very, very flexible in these things. What have I put in terms of equipment to get there? Well, let's start actually with the elite, uh, elite ship bonus. You get either the escort specialization for mine battery traverse speed and, and AA. I decided to go with the elite gun because I like the reload time, 3%. Because with these, with two guns less than, say, the shores, and only one gun more than, than the tier 6 light cruisers. She really needs all the reload she can get. So reload it is here. Reload it is also in the equipment slot. So first equipment slot. While I would have loved the traverse speed mod. I just definitely decided to go with the reload modification. And get to get that gun reload as down as much as I can. Because you don't have... You have a percent or two less than, than the very very effective fire setting ships. And you have two less guns than the than the four triple turrets on say the shores so you really need to you know really need to, to throw a lot of shells at the enemy to make uh, to get sufficient fire settings but it's totally possible in the second slot i do have the propulsion mod and that's there because i really wasn't happy with with the the engines they too they were too sluggish for my taste and if you're if you're knife fighting destroyers at close range and she is extremely effective at doing this then you do need the, uh, the 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 engine power to quickly stop and quickly get off the ground again in order to dodge torpedoes. Plus, she is relatively maneuverable, so together with the steering gear mod in the third slot, she is definitely a good ship in terms of um, maneuverability. And again, here, the concealment system mod would have been good. That would have gotten her uh, her detection range just down to seven kilometers. But I tend to play light cruisers not just in a single role. The one reason why I really like light cruisers is because they are extremely flexible and they're capable of playing to what pretty much whatever the situation requires. So you can play long, long range sniper, but you can also play close range engagements with the ship and that's when the steering gear mod comes into play. So that's why I've set her up this way. I actually only had a single Italian commander. I'm not, not sure if there is more than one. And I, I can't actually remember where I got him from, but well, I was glad I had one. So, what have we put in here? Underwater protection is pretty straightforward. I've got torpedo alert. I, I could have gone with battlefield support because that would have gotten would have gotten her both the sonar and uh, an additional sonar charge and an additional air defense alert. The air defense alert is not super effective because she is not that strong in terms of anti-air to begin with. So. I decided to go with the torpedo alert again because I might need to I might need to fight destroyers at close range and yes the sonar comes in handy at doing this but if you're dodging torpedoes it's it's just generally and and you might be surprised it's generally just for my opinion good to have these things but it will be a total viable choice uh, third third tier is the artillery maintenance no surprise here uh, fourth tier could have been Victorious Charge, but I decided to improve the slightly improve the air defense expert because I just get the I just get the two charges here. Survivalist in tier five because uh, she is relatively squishy. She's a light cruiser. She does get uh, she does get a lot of damage from battleship shells, so uh, that that kind of comes in handy. And in terms of supplies, again, no surprises. 
the high-grade coal might have been a viable choice, but I decided to go with preventative maintenance. And the improved crew rations, obviously, for reload, because we really want all the reload, and the refined diesel for speed and traverse. So, is she worth it? Is she unique enough in this relatively competitive slot of light cruisers around tier 6, 7, and 8? Because there are, there are a fair amount of these things by now. Now, does she stand out on her own? Besides, obviously, for the fact that she's Italian and there are not that many Italian ships around. So, let's play a couple of games and you can make up your own mind and get your own opinion on it. Okay, enemy carrier, but it's a bot. We've got a Richelieu, we're bottom tier. We've got a Shabayev, uh-oh. And we've got a Zims to take care of. The rest is relatively harmless. So, we'll go for A and see what we can do over there. Now the high explosive, uh, the, the armor piercing is relatively ineffective at range. So you really need to, you really need to be at, at mid to close range to make it work against light cruisers and destroyers, but you can. And I have Citadel other light cruisers or, or carriers at, at close range. So I'm gonna stick with the AP against, because I'm expecting to see destroyers first. And here you see the torpedo arcs. I mean, honestly, look at those. Compare that to some to the Japanese cruisers. Plus, you've got a 9.3 kilometer range on these things. No, it's a challenge to hit anything at 9.3 kilometers. That's a that's a given. But um, they you you can you don't need to swing the ship around much to get the torpedoes fired, which is is can can get really really handy. So let's see who we're going to encounter in A. There's nobody capping A quite yet. There's a destroyer in B. Uh, there's a Shapayev, and there now A gets capped. So let's see if we can see who it is. It's the bot Mayhem by the looks of it. Yeah, the bot Mayhem has left A, so there's nobody else in A. Now we can start opening up uh, at the enemy ships. There's some torpedoes coming. But I think they expired. There's the Akazuki. And these... Oh, there come the torpedoes. I don't know who fired these. Might have been the Sims. But, um... Look at the guns. They are... They have a very, very good dispersion. Look at the accuracy. That is pretty excellent. There, again, at this range, we can't really do much against... Uh, against something like a Shapayev even, so we'll switch over to High Explosive. The destroyers don't really pose any threats at this point, so we'll see if we can deal with the Shapayev. And um, I'm gonna just go fire some prospective torpedoes in this way, just in case he decides to go this way, but I think he's turning in. Oh, he's on fire, and I think he overextended really. Yep, there's a bots, so we don't need to worry about those. Let's see that we get the Shapayev killed. Don't want to stray into three kilometers. At this range, it would have made sense to start using armor piercing, but the Shapayev is dead. And uh, let's see if we can just torp this destroyer there. So we don't need to deal with it. And that obviously hasn't worked, has it? Has it? No, somebody else killed that thing. Okay. We don't want to get too far away. Switch over to the armor piercing at four kilometer range. That might make sense. Who, tor who torped? Enemy ship locked. And we're actually going to switch her in reverse because there's a battleship on the other side. Yeah, not the best. Not the best penetration. It's five kilometer. There's a ritual here. Um, our torpedoes are coming off reload in a second. So, yeah, he's seen us. Is he going forward? Yes, he's going forward. Okay, lead that. Enemy team captured the area. We might need to start sinking some ships. There's another fire on the carrier. Is the ritual you're going to eat my torps? Ah, uh, he stopped, but he might eat one. Yeah, he's eating one. Okay. Uh, it's looking the other way, so. Let's see if we can set him on fire while we're here. And let's see that we get a cap back because we're currently only holding all well, zero caps. 
and we're currently getting shot at by everybody. Okay, Richelieu, you, what are you turning? You're probably turning there. Oh, there's the Sims. Now that's someone we need to deal with. Switch the Hydro on. Slam the brakes on. The Sims probably got torps away. That's the Sims dead. Did we literally just get hit by a bot torpedo bombers? That is not cricket, really. Okay, we hit something else with a torpedo. That might have been the Richelieu from my previous attempts. Okay, now let's kill this Akatsuki. Akatsuki is dead. Switch over to high explosive and kite over the Richelieu. We have torps of real of cooldown almost. We are not holding any caps at this point, so we really do need to kill people here. Uh, not not getting torps away just yet. Okay, that's the Richelieu in fire. Ow. And let's see if we can. Where is he going? I definitely don't want to lead them. No, oh, let's see. Torps away. Guns away. Very fast French battleship. But we got a fire set on him. Okay, the Shokaku is down. So now I just need to survive long enough. Not be killed by the Richelieu, but that's probably he, with the next salvo he's gonna get me, if I'm unlucky. Yes. <laughs> Crap. Oh, good. Well done. I'm the Richelieu. That was close. That was a close one. Well done, the Richelieu. If I had just survived a couple of seconds longer, fast French battleship, that is, <laughs> then it would have been it. We would have gotten this. Oh, well. But we did a, a fair amount of damage, and you've seen how effective she is against destroyers. Against battleships, yeah, well, our team has not done much, and the Richelieu has murdered everybody. Well, we were bottom tier, anyway. Um, so against battleships, you really just have to set them on fire. And it is effective, but if you get close and you get shot at, you don't have much of a chance. Let's do another one. Yeah, what I should have really done there was to hide behind the island and try to, to dodge her. But, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not perfect, my friends, either. That way with, let's see, that's an, interest, that's an unusual battle for a T7, but um, let's see what we can do in C Cup. Actually, we might have, who do we have with us? Um, that's a player, actually. It kind of looks like a bot, but it's the Gnevni, I think, is a, is a real player. Uh, we have a Mayhan on the enemy team, an Atlanta, New Orleans, and a Mexico. Okay, the Mexico is kind of the only thing I really need to stay away from. The rest of them I can get close, so let's just have to head to Sea Cup and see if, if we can sort this out. The cruiser, uh, the Miyoko is a bot, so... Capture area C. Yep, I'm on you. So, you spot, I shoot at things. There is a battleship, but there's going to be more than the battleship. And there's the New Mexico. Oh, he's not going to be spotting me yet. Well, let's start opening up at him. There's the Atlanta. And that the Fargo is, is just a bot, so that's not a problem. Oh, come on, Miyoko, really? What the balls are you doing? I do not want to be broadside against things. Don't tell me I'm getting torped by bot. Have they improved the the capability of of the bot torps? That's um okay. That's been happening recently. Okay, New Mexico. Yeah, Gnevni, you need to get out of there. I'm gonna clean up the Farragut here. Just to make sure that he doesn't do something stupid, like set me on fire. Okay. Yeah, we need to disengage this and see that we kite these people away, because... Really, really don't want to be too close to them. Oh, where are we? Here. Okay. Right. I'm not sure where the New Mexico is going. Okay, 
wait for the Knevni to pass by and torps out. Unless the New Mexico is going to beach. And I could really do with a fire by now. Thank you, game. See, this is the 5% fire chance that's really, that's really hurting you here. But again, the torp angles are very good. So we can open up. And that should be the first set of torps. So we have two hits. Two hits and a flood. The Gnev needed some torp hits as well, I believe. Now we bring her around. Let's see if we can get a fire in the mix. And there's some more aircraft coming in. Okay, that's our second set of torpedoes, and that should take care of the New Mexico. Okay, that's one down. Now, Mr. At Atlanta, at this range, I'm actually going to start using the armor piercing. Because we should be able to kill that thing from here relatively reliably. Yeah, we're getting some good penetrations in. And a six second reload just really... Look at the accuracy on these guns. This is, this is one thing that I really enjoy is the the dispersion and the accuracy on these Italian guns. That's not actually completely historically correct because the uh, Italian guns were suffering quite severely from, from accuracy during some of the battles. And um, against the British, where the Italians had the range advantage, so that much is accurate, but the... Is that a bot carrier? Yes, that's a bot carrier. Surprisingly effective, these things. Uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yes, the... the um, the Italians had the range advantage over the British, but the accuracy was lacking, so... Um, let's see if we can turn this game around. Where's the, the carrier? Let's just follow the planes. The carrier is a lot worth a lot of points, so I want that carrier dead, especially that we just lost somebody again. It's gonna be somewhere over there. There's blind fire. Let's see if I can hit him from here. Nope. We've got three ships over here. There's the carrier. Okay. Now we don't want to get any closer to the carrier because we need to head up north and see if we can kill something else. So while we do have the cap advantage, we're still over 100 points behind. And we need to make something happen here. And the carrier is going to be dead in a minute anyway. We hit the enemy. But I need something else to die. There's still two cruisers and a destroyer out there. Turrets turn slowly. Where is the carrier going? He's on fire. He's not going to last much longer. Okay, carrier is down. The New Orleans needs to die, and we only have a minute left because he's flipping the cup. And we're down on points. So, okay, New Orleans, you need to die. You don't have any torps, so I'm just going to rush you. You do have 200 millimeter guns, but I don't think he's paying attention. Let's switch over to the armor piercing and hunt the mayhem. New Orleans runs right into my torps, doesn't she? Does she? Yep, she does. Okay, this one's dead. There's a Pensacola and that mayhem is somewhere over there. Uh, how are we on points? No, we're still behind. What can I kill at this time? I could kill the mayhem, but I need to get visual on him and he's hiding somewhere be behind the island. So, uh, Pensacola it is. Nope, there's the mayhem. Okay. Nope, Mayhem is priority. Can I kill you in the time remaining? Ah, oh, that's a close one. Come on. Come on. Reload. Gotcha. And that's the win. <laughs> See, this, this is exactly the same thing I just did wrong in the previous battle. The Mayhem threw the game just now, right? Um, he, he should have... He should have gotten between, and I thought he would, get between these islands. He was low on health. I thought he would get between these islands. He would um, disengage and just hide and wait it out. Because there was no ch there was no way in hell he was going to get me. Um, I mean, <laughs> I'm in a light cruiser. I've got, I've, got, uh, I've got hydro. And he was trying to torp me and then hit me. And he even fired his guns. Right. He fired his guns, tried to sink me. They were leading in points. Yes, it would have been close, but he, it would have been better for him to actually go and hide and hope that the Pensacola does enough damage against me. Because, um, yeah, that's how you throw games, like I just did in the, in the previous one. But, again, so you've seen, well, the good things about this ship. She has 
excellent torpedoes with a very long range. She doesn't have too many of them, but the, the angles are fantastic. The guns do relatively little damage, and I have done the DPS calculations. She does comparatively little damage to uh, against some, compared to something like the Shores. She has a relatively small fire chance, just 1% better than the American ships, but she can totally do some fire damage. And against destroyers, they are very lethal. The armor piercing is effective at short to mid range. Against lightly armored targets, anything else, you just fire explosive against. So, this is a good ship. I I am I am totally on board with this ship for a tier seven cruiser. The one thing, the the one thing that's well difficult with the shores is that you, that you can rush her, and I'm not I'm not talking about destroyers, but I'm also talking about uh, about larger capital ships like other cruisers can get relatively close to her, and she really is a bit of a ranged specialist, whereas this ship kind of feels a bit more like the French light cruisers in that she is she has very very good range and she does have an excellent range I mean again um, what are we talking about 12.7 kilometers versus what does the shores have 12.7 where's the shores shores is over here the shores has an 11.2 kilometer range so she outranges the shores by a mile and she is very she's maneuverable it's relatively hard to hit her from that distance I think if she was having the same amount of damage and fire chance as the Soviet destroyers, she would have been overpowered. <laughs> so this is a this is a very good tier seven cruiser. I like the combination. the The air defense alert is quite useless in in, in effect. You're not really going to end up shooting many many planes down. She's not an air defense cruiser, but um, the sonar is the sonar can be quite handy, and I like this ship. She's a very, very good all-round cruiser, in my opinion. If you know how to play light cruisers, and if you enjoy light cruisers, which is something that I definitely do. So Sorry for getting distracted by the shiny again. It happens. Uh, so I've, I've got the next weekend pre-recorded, and I've already got footage for, for something next week. I mean, you've seen the Turpets video. That was actually something while I was collecting footage, and I was just letting the camera roll. <laughs> that happened. But... Um, We'll, we'll we'll get we'll try to get to the things that you're asking me to um, to to talk about, and we we'll, don't don't worry we'll get there eventually, and I'll try not to be, not to get distracted too much by shiny things. So that's it for today. Have a good one, everybody. See ya. Bye bye.